Good day to you. So let's see, why don't you take the day off? You don't have to watch this video if you have read a newspaper from Mexico. Uh, or you can take the day off if you have listened to a radio program from China. Um, or you can take the day off if you have watched television from Ghana. Um, or just go ahead and take the day off if you have uh, surfed the web um, in a, on a Lebanese website. Well, maybe one person this class has. But the rest of you, I'm imagining you're not taking the day off from this video because you haven't seen any of these examples of media content. And isn't that amazing? Given how much media content there is available in the world and how much is circulating, just to put the question in its most obscene form, can you imagine anybody in Ghana, whether they have seen an American TV show? Do you think that people in Lebanon have looked at an English newspaper? Do you think that people in China have heard an American song? Do you think that people in Mexico have watched... Did I already say Mexico? I can't even remember. I mean, these four countries, they know American media content. So this is where we're headed. In the second half of, of chapter 9 on media content, we're going to try and summarize for you some of the media content that's going on in these four countries, which, which make them very, very different. And the content grows out of the cultural characteristics, the philosophies, the regulations, the financing, everything that we've been studying so far in these countries. Let's take on Mexico first. You already know that Mexico has a ton of newspapers. It has a ton of newspapers in part because the newspapers are paid for by government. The government doesn't fund the newspapers. No, that's not how it's done in Mexico. Instead, what they do is they pay for these inserts. They pay to take out ad space in a newspaper and thereby get the government message out there in front of the people. And it's a very regular form of income for newspapers, so they count on it, and it allows them to, to profit quite handsomely. It's a very strange relationship. <clears throat> so in Mexico, what you have is a lot of, of media content that focuses on the following in newspapers. First of all, you have a lot of crime in Mexico. And you have a lot of photographs and newspapers that are the most horrendous photographs, if you consider to be blood, blood and guts to be horrendous, that I personally have ever seen. It's so vivid. Um, you can Google it. You can Google the Mexican newspaper called Alarma. Go ahead, Google it, Alarma, and see what kind of photos you'll find on that front page. You'll find, probably find a gangster laying in a pool of blood as the front page story. And really close up blood. That's... That's Mexico. Um, you will not find nudity or profanity too much in Mexican media. Ironically, where you find profanity is in the English language TV programming that they import. A film, for example, from the United States will have its profanity in because the editors haven't edited it out. Um, when it comes to radio, you will find radio to be really vibrant in Mexico. You will find all kinds of music as you scan across the Mexican dial. You'll come across ranchero music, which sounds like a very pretty country song, but is often singing about drug cartels and the importance of having a drug cartel to fund the schools within your town because who else is going to do it? Um, pretty amazing when you listen to the style of music that ranchero music is. It's most like country. You also find banda, you find mariachi, you find norteña. These may not mean anything to you, but... It's just pointing out that Mexico has a wide variety of musical history, a lot of it coming from various parts of uh, various regions of Mexico where the music came up. For example, banda music. That's a kind of music that came up in, in the northwest of Mexico because a lot of Germans settled in Mexico and they brought with them the tuba. And so you hear the tuba mixed into this brass big ensemble. It's 16 pieces, 17 pieces, and it's a really unique kind of music. Google Banda if you want to. When it comes to television, you have a ton of American shows. I mean, the American TV programming is so prevalent on Mexican TV that you can even find NFL football commentated in Mexican, in, in Spanish, I should say. And even in Mexico City, they will devote whole movie theaters to showing American football. 
So football is something that is huge, but really all Mexican, all American programming is big. You can find dramas, sitcoms, all in Mexico, translated into Mexico, um, into Spanish. Now, one form of Mexican content that is really, really unique is the telenovela. Telenovela, or television novel, if you want to think of it that way, is a soap opera. But it's a very different kind of soap opera than we, than we have here in the United States. In the United States, our soap operas tend to go on and on and on for years and years, like General Hospital, for example. And it's a joke amongst females who watch that kind of programming. They'll say, you know, I missed this show for five years, but I watched one episode and I'm all caught up. Well, that's not the way it is in Mexican telenovelas. They run for six months. They end. The actors go on to new telenovelas. Often there is a very, very dramatic storyline that revolves around two people who are in love with each other, but who come from different classes. Somebody's coming from a very rich upper class, and somebody's coming from a very poor lower class. And the, the families around these two people getting together do not agree, and it creates a lot of conflict. That's very, very typical in Mexican dramas. They're famous. Mexican telenovelas are famous. They're all over the world. Even in Russia, where Spanish is hardly spoken, telenovelas is like one of the number one kinds of TV soap operas that you can watch. And you can find them on uh, our regular American TV. If you scan through the channels, you'll come across a Mexican telenovela. Moving on to China now. China has the party newspapers. You know about those. They're the political newspapers, the communist newspapers, if you will. Those newspapers are almost always going to have a, a front page photo of a Chinese high official doing something very ceremonial, like meeting a leader from, from another country. Let's say it's France or let's say it's a closer country. Let's say it's a Indonesia. And the Chinese leader is always going to look very important and shaking hands and look very much in control. There's a lot of these kinds of photos in the party newspaper because the party newspaper is promoting the Communist Party. It's, it's making sure that people realize, from the Communist Party's point of view, the good things that are happening in the country. The good things with the economy, the good things with the harvest of food, the good things with the health of the average Chinese person. A lot of good news coming out in party newspapers. In the private newspapers, which are not party newspapers, you will find some some criticism, but it's never going to be of the big party leaders. It's never going to be of the Communist Party. It's never going to question communist ideology, just like we don't question capitalist ideology here in the United States, and an odd irony there. But in China, you're not going to find those criticisms. What you will find is a criticism of corruption of a municipal official. So, so like the mayor of a town who's accused of taking money from parking meters, for example, that might be something that you will see in a Mexican newspaper. When it comes to radio, almost all radio is local programming. You do hear various kinds of pop on Chinese radio. As we noted before, radio is not that important in China, but for those who listen to it, you've got Asian pop, Mando pop, um, you've got uh, foreign language education, so English programs trying to teach Chinese English. And you've got professional advice programs, advice programs for money, advice programs for investments, advice programs for healthcare. When it comes to TV, you have a lot of investigative reporting. Again, these are trying to weed out corruption at lower levels, trying to investigate a person who had a relationship with a building contractor, and that person also happens to sit on a party apparatus, and they're maybe donating some uh, they're accepting some money from this person, and this person um, owns a company that, that constructs roads. And there's a, that level of corruption, but the party itself is not questioned. And finally, you on Chinese television, you have something similar to Mexico, but it's different. It's called the melody drama, the melody drama in China. This is a, a kind of, um, I guess it harkens back to Chinese opera. You have um, very elaborate costuming. You have musicals, and you have a storyline that will talk about the eternal love between two people and how that love cannot, cannot be broken no matter what circumstances interfere in their lives. 
Um, there's a lot of exaggerated emotions, a lot of exaggerated stereotypes. They're not all about love. I don't need, need to make the to be misinterpreting Chinese melody dramas. They they could be about honor. They could be about history. They could be about tradition. They could be a lot of things having to do with Chinese history, which is as we know very ancient. All right, moving now to Ghana. In Ghana, you have newspapers. Almost all the newspapers are political newspapers. You have very few entertainment-oriented newspapers. You have some. Almost all of the newspapers in Ghana have very, very small inventory. If you go to a newspaper stand, um, you may have one copy of a newspaper for sale, and if you buy it, that's it until tomorrow. So the, the distribution of newspapers is not that great. And we already know that newspapers can't make it to people who can't read newspapers, but also because of the country, um, it's just very difficult to get a newspaper to a place that doesn't have a direct road to it. So newspapers still not taking off in Ghana. You still have languages that don't have a printed form. When it comes to radio, here you have your most robust medium. It's highly diversified. You'll have magazine radio where each each um, program, a half an hour long, will take on a 10-minute segment. It will talk, for example, about new oil that's being discovered in Ghana. And Ghana does have a lot of oil, and it's going to make it be, it become one of the most um, economically... Um, it's going to have a lot of economic growth, Ghana, because of that. You'll also find stories that talk about Ghana and its trading with Nigeria and other countries. You'll, you'll find a lot of magazine stories in Ghana. But you'll also find a lot of stories that have to do with health and well-being of people and trying to find the right balance between recommending natural cures, which Ghana has a lot of, and also recommending more traditional cures. You know, getting somebody to buy something in a pharmacy in Ghana and to take a cold compress pill, that's um, really unusual. It takes a lot. We, we do it as a matter of recourse. In, that, in the U.S., everybody's on something pharmaceutical-wise, but in Ghana, to take a pill as opposed to a leaf from a tree, that's, that's very, very unusual. On TV, you have a lot of discussion programs. A lot of TV is very expensive. They don't have the people power to produce it. So instead, what they do is they buy programs from Nigeria and other places. Another unique genre on Ghanaian TV is the televangelist program. It's a whole church sermon that you see from a church, kind of like we have televangel televangelical programming here in the United States. They have it in Ghana. And you have a lot of programs that are really trying to promote indigenous culture, going back to some deep African roots, showing the costuming, really elaborate gold, for example, um, in the costuming, showing hats that were worn from previous eras in Ghana, and talking about how Ghana, Ghanaian people have fared over the years with these occupations by Portugal, by the United States, well, not by the United States, by Britain and now finds itself a modern country trying to form itself out of its past. In Lebanon, the newspapers are very, very elite. They're not written for people that are um, interested in average things, so to speak. They're interested in very, very specific political affairs. They want to know what the Syrian government is doing. They want to know what Israel is doing. They want to know what the United States is doing. They want to know where France stands. They want to know where, where any country in that region, Iran included, is having an impact on Lebanese politics. They're very, very political, and they're not profitable. People subsidize those newspapers. The, the companies that subscribe to them, they pay for those newspapers. They rent space, so to speak, if you've ever thought of it that way. Um, and you have several foreign newspapers that are actually published in foreign languages in Lebanon. You have a French newspaper, the Orient, and the, you have the English newspapers as well. It's not just brought in to Lebanon from another country, but actually published there. When it comes to radio, radio is licensed as either a political or a non-political radio station. So you have uh, you have a radio station that's either playing music, mostly uh, Arabic, sometimes pop, or you have a discussion-oriented radio program that's talking about politics. And you have to be licensed to do one of those. You can't be both, and you can't do one without being licensed. The political shows, you can imagine, can be... Um, quite incendiary, uh, especially given Lebanon's size, very small, and all these countries around it that at a moment's notice could have it really wanted to crush Lebanon. And imagine living in, a, in an existence like that where your neighbors around you can be hostile and you have to be very, very careful about how you step. Um, in TV, 
Um, it's still relatively unprofessional. TV programs start late. It'll say 1 o'clock, and the program won't start till 1.08. It's because the Lebanese uh, TV programming schedule is very loose, and they're still trying to fit things in, and time is not that important. You'll find a lot of political satire programs in, in uh, Lebanon, programs that are making fun of politicians through jokes. And finally, you'll find what I mentioned earlier, which is this comedy program that's done in the United States or done in England, which they bring over into Lebanon, and then they try and copy it with their own actors and their own accents, and it, it never quite seems authentic. It seems like a copy. So there you have it. There's some content on the lesser-known countries in this chapter, and I hope that you'll be able to handle the quiz question, which addresses some of these very issues. Have a great day.